Hello there everyone, I'm Ham Mugaliba, and thank you for joining me back here in TNO, the last series of Europe, in which right now, we gotta talk about some missile designs. Goring tapped twice against the thick glass pane. The trail of smoke coming from a cigar bouncing up and off it as he turned his head to the two men, both wearing sharp business suits and both serving the Reich in their own specific ways. Taking the cigar out of his mouth, he displayed the hand that took it towards the launch facility, currently in the process of launching a missile. The man to his left, shorter, brown-haired and blue-eyed, spoke up, knowing that Goring wanted him to. If you're asking about the chances of the missile striking the Mark II of your bunker, my big daddy, the chances are higher than 80%. He spoke, letting an anxious but confident smile take to him. However, Goring seemed uninterested, rolling his eyes as he looked back to the facility, enjoying the light show. The Reich only accepts 100%, but fine, I'll take it. The scientist felt his heart drop a little. Still, Goring took a slight pause, closing his eyes and taking in another puff of his cigar, the crisp stinging his lungs slightly, and he let out an ex exhale as he looked back to the other man who had yet to speak up. Rupert, was it? Of similar height to the scientist next to him, though looked more openly assured. Yes, my big daddy. All members of the i Pact have accepted the purchase of these missiles, and Goring's eyes narrowed. Of course, I've also made sure they will receive 120% of what they ordered, and will be under law of the Ionites Pact, forced to pay for those as well. A graceful smile came over Goring's lips, and he felt positively sly. I'm satisfied then. They may complain about all they want about us overcharging them, he said, waving his cigar around lightly, letting the smoke strike the two men in front of him, but in the end, it'll all be for the security. Isn't that right, gentlemen? Silently, the men nodded. I assure you, they are well worth the buck full of the bang. So right now, we have plus one, which is weird, because it says nuclear stockpile, or... Our societal development begin to slowly improve, but our nuclear stockpile is slowly improve at the month of plus two, which doesn't make any sense because if you do that again, it just goes up by two. We're still a massive stockpile. So not, nothing really changed there, but okay. Hey, we got three quarters of a billion dollars. That means nothing to us. At this point, trying to cut down the debt means literally nothing. Just increase the GDP. Like, I'm usually the other way around. I like cutting down debt, but the, the debt's just so high. There's just nothing you can do about it, so. All right, so we got that stuff done. Scout, anti sub stuff. We don't really use those here, so we'll see what happens. Um, let's finish off our air doctrine, shall we? That'd be very good against Americans, so. Um, let's fix up these planes. Planes. Oh, yes. Ah, that's... Can we actually improve them? No, we cannot. That sucks. I'd love to improve them. That'd be really cool. Also, we need more factories. We're at... 43, huh? Go down to... 50. Go down to 50 for now. Because we just need to fill out these guys, which isn't too bad, but into heck itself. And I believe I've already read the next one we're going to do, which is... What? Kicking down the door. So if you want to do that again, please go right ahead. But yeah, I'm going to save this one for last, because I don't want to lose Weekly War Sport. So, yeah, just like old times. Ah, 1940, those heady days when it felt as if Germany would be able to conquer the whole world in a matter of a few years. Of course, reality did not prove to be so kind as that, but they must be admitted that even the most fierce enemies of the Reich that Germany was in this period, peerless in battle, that we should once again find ourselves fighting a fierce war of movement in France is enough to make any devoted Aryan of sufficient age nostalgic, and Fuhrer Goring is no exception. The only difference is that this time around, he is not the chief of the Luftwaffe, but the Fuhrer himself, and the enemy's not the French, but a slew of traitorous dogs. Well, what is there to be done by waiting? Sound the horn, we march to battle in France once more. Oh, move very quickly, we hope to avoid a nuclear exchange. Okay, so we, I might have to, hmm. Just gonna do that too, that's fine. Um, hmm. We're building a lot of roads, which is nice to have, but I would like to have. Okay, so if that's a case, honestly, I don't think we need to do this one. As much as I want to do this one, I don't want to lose... That's that's just way too much war support. I'm sorry, I can't lose that. I like the more encryption decryption, but... That's, I just I just can't do that. I just can't. So, what do we do after this one? Monstein's Lessons. Oh, well, I guess we have to do some other ones since we, this one requires the shot to die. So, okay, that's fine with us. Um, I, you know, I love this, this icon. Goring's Caribbean Vacation. That looks so cool. Viking. Battle across the Atlantic. Um, we could probably do that one, so. Reaching America through the Atlantic Ocean will likely be a daunting task, even for our invincible Kriegsmarine. The American Navy outnumbers us by an all intelligence reports, and so we must compensate for what we lack in numbers with air and prowess and fearlessness. We shall drive into the battle lines with the strength of lions and speed around their hulks with the energy of cheetahs. Our admirals are more than eager for a rematch, seeking to wipe the blemish of our near defeat on the open seas from the last go-round from the record of the previous precious navy. Of course, it also fall to Luftwaffe to sink American ships at blinding speeds, but if it keeps the admirals happy, then Goring will let them have their chance. <clears throat> Since we're here anyways, let's go build a few more millies, because we, we honestly could really actually use them, so. There you go. Get a couple more millies. At this point, let's get ready to go. Uh, got some comms to go through as well, which is pretty good, pretty normal for us. Um, where are you at? Oh, yeah, you off the enabling bay, that's fine. Um, and you guys are training still. Don't keep doing that for now. Head back to port. If you, if you do this, um, you guys go there. Cool. Really, it's only just that little area there. 
So if you see anything around here, you guys can do that. Um, it's fine. I don't want to make any smaller than this because they just we had to death stack these guys, unfortunately. So. Are we losing any fuel yet? Not yet. So hopefully we do well. Um, there's obviously no guarantees, but uh, I'm I'm a little anxious to do this. So a couple comments, such as someone someone wants me to show the Vatican. Oh yeah, I guess we didn't take out the Vatican. So Pope John the Twenty Third. So if you want to know about him, please go right ahead. He's probably not very strong. Yeah, not that much manpower. No divisions, of course. And to finish off the Pope. His culture is Central Italian. Uh, let's see. Is the war against Italy or Burgundy possible? I guess it is technically, but it's. You have to be so extremely precise, it's not even funny. So, yeah. The extreme precision that you need is just ridiculous. You should be able to get there in more than enough time. Um, we should do okay. I mean, we, our guys can blitz pretty darn well, but we'll see what happens. There's nothing else here, really. Uh, yeah, there's that, there's that. The GWRI, don't really need to see about that. Preparations, they're significant, but whatever at this point, doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. We still have, uh, Mad Disabled, so I'm gonna save real, just in case. You never know. So. Uh, I hope we do well. I hope we do well. Also, let's see, someone says, click the Rex Commissariat. I'm not sure which one you want to click on. There's a lot of Rex Commissariats here. So, if you want to see one of these, please let me know. Like, Marrakesh, or North Africa, or just, like, one of these guys. Please let me know, because I'll be glad to do it. Italian Social Republic, of course. Uh, Britannian. Um... So yeah, just let me know. Oh boy, I'm, I'm oh, hmm, anxious, a little anxious here. Can we actually win? Uh, let's see, someone says eat more. Oh, we are, we are definitely going to be eating more and more and more and more here. Let's see, someone asked, why is there a Slovak state? I said the same thing yesterday, like, I don't want a Slovak state here. It should be part of the Balkan thing, but it's just how it turned out. But the Burgundian invasion. After weeks of blusters, threats, and increasingly worrying troop movements, the unthinkable has occurred. A state of war has broken up between the German Reich and the Burgundian state. Although Hemmler's domain is unquestionably the most internationally loathed nation on earth, Goring's invasion has sent a shockwave of panic through the international channels. Namely, that the alleged Burgundian nuclear stockpile still remains un unaccounted for. Assuming that the allegations are true, this will be the first conflict between nuclear powers in human history. Well, not really. And it could be very well the last, just because of Italy and us. More worrying is that the Shadow State, in an extraordinary rare press release, has vowed to smash the False Reich with whatever it takes to claim victory. An ominous threat for the rest of the world, which can only sit and watch as the first hail divisions cross the Burgundian border since the first German Civil War. Oh boy. Well, let's see what happens. Time sins. Mutinies are crushed in accordance with eternal and unchanging iron laws. Um, I want you guys to go. Seriously, just go. When you call all of our allies in, so. We gotta move fast, boys. Look how many allies we have. I love it. Don't you love having allies? It makes the game lag really hard, but whatever. I want you to swarm for Os Paris. Swarm. Go now. And then go to there. Go, 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 go. Uh, their division's not bad. Also, there was another comment saying that the reason why you lost the border war yesterday is because they were just... The soldiers that I sent in were literally just training earlier. So, yeah, that was my fault. Uh, I should have given my guys a little bit more time to relax and stuff like that. Okay, you guys are dumb. Just go. Do whatever you need to do. Head up there. There you go. We got encircled, but that's fine. We actually have all spares, which is really nice. Uh-oh. What's going on? Oh! Okay, so I mean, I mean, okay, that wasn't too bad. I mean, honestly, like, obviously we disabled MAD, but that really wasn't too bad, so, um, hmm, interesting. I would like to see it. Maybe I'll try it again sometime, where I don't have it enabled, because all it did was take, like, a few states up here in Os Paris, so, honestly, it's probably really, really possible. It's actually, this is easier than Italy, because Italy, you have one massive front, one massive front, while we have, like, we're hitting on three sides. Now the planes, we could probably actually do it pretty legitly with just choppers, so. Just, ch and there was, this time, there was, I didn't see any modifier here, um, that had us, give, give us a penalty of minus 50,000. So, honestly, I think we could do Burgundy again, probably, without 
cheating, or it's, I call it using disabling mad cheating, but whatever. Um, whoa, he's back. Whoa, look at that. I didn't realize Siegfried Mueller came back. Whoa, that's so cool. That's a, that's a pleasant surprise. Siegfried, he's back. Oh, it's so nice. Oh, it's so nice to have him. Oh, oh they're gone now, so. Yeah, apologies for having to use it, disabling mad, but it is what it is, my friends. It is what it is. Now, who do we take out now? Um, I guess you guys just come over here. Uh, I, I still want to take out the, the states that are still too independent for me, so we'll see what happens. Um, yeah. Let's go. Cool. So, that was an answer to the call. If you want to about that, please go right ahead. And cut the communication lines. There you go. If you want to about that? Please go ahead. And flatten Os Paris. Yeah, that that was honestly not bad. I, we could, honest, uh, I'll be 100% like honest. Like I'm sure we could do that without disabling Mad, but I'm a little like lazy, so. Cool. All right, what else is down here? The Black Sun Eclipse. For 20 years, this day has been coming, or perhaps it's been closer to 50. The beginning of the feud hardly matters. What matters is this. After all this time, the government Gorling has crushed the dreams of Heinrich Himmler. Once and for all, never again will the Schwartz's sun rise over Germany or anywhere else, despite possessing nuclear weapons, such as the fury and speed of invasion that Himmler never had a chance to deploy them. Let this be the final proof that even the most intricate of plotted webs may be dashed by the thunderous beat of the Ingalls' wings. Eagle's wings. We remove Fall Schwartz. So honestly, yeah, Italy was more difficult than them. But then again, I didn't just, I just, I didn't enable Mad, but whatever. Or, you know what, you know, you know what I mean. I, words are hard. Look at that. Wait. Do we really want to get rid of that? Th this doesn't say it's just for Burgundy. So, I don't think I'm going to get rid of that yet. Okay, yeah, why not? Let's not get rid of that. That seems like a bad idea to get rid of right now. So, um, I guess it's Asia time. Because as much as I want to do this, uh, we're going to wait for this a little bit maybe. Yeah, I think I want to focus more on Asia for now. So, yeah, Burgundy's done. Great. Okay, that was really fast. The southern route. But look at this. After much deliberation, our high command has finally made its decision. The might of the German Wehrmacht will strike south. <clears throat> the time to prepare for perhaps our greatest fight yet is now at hand. The army must be mobilized and moved east towards our border with Iran. Slowly, do not alarm anyone. When the time finally comes, our army, if one fell swoop, shall strike out and sweep aside all who oppose us. We only have one shot at this. Once the attack begins, we will commit everything towards overrunning the south and establishing a border with Japan as soon as possible in local areas. We will also completely catch the rule by surprise. No one will expect us to make such a daring attack, which is part of the appeal of this route. Nothing can stop us. The might of the strike is unparalleled. And Sieg is assured. Sieg Heil. <clears throat> Operation Alexander. Operation Alexander is the name attributed to our push south to the borders of the sphere. Like the great conqueror before us, our armies will storm south into Iran and crush any resistance into the into our path. Whether or not Iran joins the pact is of no consequence, we will march through the country one way or another. Let's take this to Afghanistan, our next stop. With plenty of saturation bombings, we should be able to sweep aside any resistance that would dare stand before us and blitz through the country no time. That takes us to the gates of India, the largest challenge presenting to us. Here, our panzers and mobile infantry will shine as we break out of the mountains and into the subcontinent itself. After we take several strategically important cities, the government will have no choice but to surrender. This operation must succeed. We cannot proceed with our plans to destroy the sphere if we cannot get a direct border with the Japanese puppet states. Operation Alexander will be continuous blitz throughout the entire Middle East and into the Indian subcontinent. Once we start the operation, there will be no stopping to ensure that the Japanese stay out of our business. Preparation is key. Alright then. Um, so we should be able to just go to war with these guys like this, right? Go through the south. I don't want to send the tanks here just because it's so bad. For Finding a land war in Asia just sucks so much. And I will send these guys over here too, but we gotta take a Xinjiang first. You see about the sphere? Uh, well, actually, you know what? Let's not do this one first. Then, let's wait. Uh, it says we it has to be continuous. So, you see about the sphere? Japan's hold on their sphere is shakier than we first thought. <clears throat> Discontent over corporate is about to exploitation is nearly incomprehensible. They're so hated. Forced payments to Japan directly. Strict military and government oversight and limitations of few prospects of economic advancement has made Japan's hold on their conquest from the Second World War fragile, to say the least. If we extend our hands and offer the downtrodden plebs of these Asian backwaters the opportunity, many of them will jump at the chance to stab Japan in the back. All we need to do is offer some incentives. Dragon rises? Oh, yes. No one has suffered more from the Japanese than the Chinese. For over two brutal decades, the Chinese have had to endure Japanese occupation, taxation, government oversight, and total economic domination. And yet, the Chinese still remain unbroken. Passive resistance in the reconstruction government is still uh, surprisingly high, even after the near total oversight from the samurai for so long. The Chinese have been biding their time and boast impressive industrial capabilities, as well as a modest army. Their participation against the Japanese is nearly assured. We only need to send our agents to make our friendships and betray their betrayal officers. 
the northern realm. Why would we invade hundreds of hundreds of kilometers of brutal mountain ranges to get a Japan's throat when we already have a perfectly usable route to the north? There's no need to complicate our invasion by trying to make a pipe dream become a reality. The northern route, though under development, currently lacking infrastructure, is much more simple and a direct route to the heart of the Japanese Empire. With a little work, Siberia can be a tool to support the massive armies needed for a greatest war effort yet. The Manchurian plans are... Uh, plains are the textbook definition of perfect terrain for Blitzkrieg. Once the initial mountain ranges are breached, we'll hide open plans run straight to Beijing. Beijing. With their superiority, no Japanese unit could hope to stand against the steel might of a Wehrmacht in the field. All of our work, blood, sweat, and tears of unfallen comrades, all sacrificed to get us to this point. This moment, and Siglum's near. One more war, and the Reich shall achieve her destiny. Her dominance over all those who dare stand against us, seek how the fear leads us to glory. We'll get some more max planning, but that won't matter too much. The militarist and administrator, Nanjing, 1 a.m. Also, Wei slowly looked around himself as he approached the unassuming Haba warehouse. No one following, no Ken Pai Tai, nothing suspicious, nevertheless, Nola, you go in first, make sure it's not a trap. <clears throat> One of his bodyguards nodded and went in. After a few tense moments, he returned. Everything seems in order, Herr General. They are here, including Zong Wu himself. Raymond checked his suits in one of his window reflections one last time, then motioned his entourage to follow him. What well, looked like just any other warehouse had been quickly remodeled. Fancy chairs and a heavy conference table had been replaced. Cargo holds, drinks, and glasses were accurately distributed. And expensive carpets and handmade lamps rounded off that picture. The Chinese have certainly tried to make the place presentable. And there in the middle stood the man he was waiting here for. Gao Zong Wu. President of the Chinese Republic. A firm handshake later, and I remember could finally start where he had been here for. Get the Chinese to fight Japan so German blood wanted to be spilled. He didn't put it that way, of course, but the other side wasn't stupid. They knew Goring Shorner and the company wanted pawns, not allies. Still, the meeting went something prog somewhat pragmatic, but everyone knew and al could almost feel the other's revulsion. But that didn't matter. For now, that all that mattered was dealing with Japan. That was the only thing that mattered now. Wartime makes for strange bedfellows. Strength in Chinese unity. To keep the Chinese weak, the Japanese have allowed warlords to pick up the bones of rural China to this day. All of them still have their own personal armies to encourage competition and infighting throughout the continent. All the warlords have had to, had to accept being a part of the Copra Spatosphere, willing or not, along with the monetary payments that, some, that come with being a member state. There are a number of warlords who are hopelessly dependent on Japan, but there are an equal number that chief or chafe under the burden of the Japanese that are placed upon them. Shangxi and Shijuan, both influential and powerful warlords in their own right, to have much to gain from the destruction of Japan. If we focus on sowing dissent in these regions, there's a good chance that we could convince the warlords to rise up against the Japanese Empire. Actually, is there anything else here? Anything different? Okay, so look at this. Crack the sphere. As unaware of our intentions. As loyal, 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 friendly, friendly, loyal, 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 loyal. Influence sphere nation? Um. Yeah, we have all the PP. Wants to do it, right? Unsure of the upcoming con Ooh, look, unsure of the upcoming conflict. Ooh, very nice. I didn't know this. I'm, I'm glad we saved our PP. Look at that. Against Mad Dog. The Japanese have been using tr rival warlords, uh, or warlord rivalries massively to keep the Chinese we can occupy. This is a secret no to no one. Our agents in the Albert, ever resourceful, have found a way to use one of the local conflicts to our advantage. By sending guns to Shaibi Shanma, one of the northern warlords with a deep hated hatred of their southern neighbor, we could potentially win them over to our anti Japanese cause. They're like most Chinese, not thrilled to be part of the sphere, but and could very well be tempted to fight with enough gifts and promises. Yeah, give them some stuff. Mm. In the time of this recording, I believe there is a submod that's in early development for, I think, Ma Clique? I think? So, I would like to try it out sometime. We'll see what happens, though. I want to see, I want to do it after it gets quite a bit more developed, but allies in the farthest places. For over two decades, Indonesia has been exploited ruthlessly by the Japanese Empire. The Japanese use a heavy hand to keep partisan activity to acceptable levels, and as a result, the IJ has a substantial permanent garrison station in the region. Tensions run high, and if presented with an opportunity, even the Japanese-sponsored puppet government may be swayed to turn against the Empire if given the opportunity. Sending our agents to clue in the Indonesians should be a high priority. If they were to join us, a substantial portion of the sphere's manpower could end up being tied down fighting a massive insurrection. Through the steps? Oh! Our supply consumption factor will be decreased by 20%. That's really nice. That's actually really strong. And? Thank you. Just influence all the sphere nations. I don't care who they are. Oh! Oh, wait, hold on. They went back up. Oh! Okay, so we have to keep... Be oh, that is interesting. Maybe it's not worth doing, because it keeps, keeps going back up to back up to normal levels. Through the steps, though... <clears throat> The infrastructure in Central Asia will be of the utmost importance for upcoming war with Japan and its sphere. One of our main supply routes will run throughout the entirety of the Rexcom Asari Turkestan. To them, our existing infrastructure will need major upgrades and this is to become a major supply route for impending invasions. The existing dirt road will be the bones upon which we build new autobahns on. Rail lines shall be... Are, there aren't any? No matter. We will build those too. Cool. Get some more infrastructure too, which is awesome. I hope to go to war with Afghanistan and stuff, but... Huh. Hmm. You know what's sad? I'm out of coffee now. That sucks. The autopsy vision. 
our contacts to the Indonesian government might prove useful after all, if not in a way originally intended. By accidentally leaking our communication with Indonesia to no double agents, we can sow distrust between Japan and its sphere lackeys. We might even trigger a small purge. Either way, our opponent won't be as united. Of course, doing this would cause the Japanese to crack down on their puppets and thus would end a ruling of Sionan as well. There might still be a chance with Sionan. Oh, that really sucks. That Oh, they're extremely loyal. Whoa. Betray the Hind. Um, well, I'll see what happens, I guess. <clears throat> Secure the Russias. Our holdings in the Russias are, are in a sorry state. To put it mildly, across a beer of factories lay silent, the ruins a testament to both Germany's strength of arms and that Russian stubbornness. Mines lay empty, and their equipment stripped and stolen while thousands of displaced wo people wander the vast plains. The rail lines that once crossed the Great Plains are totally destroyed, and even the dirt roads are in total disrepair. The situation is abysmal. Acqu Normally, none of this would be an issue, and we would let the local administrations deal with reconstruction, with the impending war with Japan on the horizon, however. We cannot afford to sit and wait perhaps years for basic dirt roads to be redug. A concentrated effort towards rebuilding vital industry and infrastructure should be implemented, and the locals should be put back to work. Running through the jungle. Burma is a gate to China at large. It is here that our initial push will be made, and here where we could potentially have the most issue pushing through. The vast peaks and dense jungles paired with an inhospitable climate makes for hellish battlefield conditions, and any fighting could potentially grant any advance we try to make to a halt. We are fortunate, then, that perhaps we need not fight the Burmese, Burmese army. New reports tell us of another displeased subject of the Japanese Empire, forced to pay into Japan's economic sphere for little to no game. Perhaps with the right words, we could pass unimpeded through Burma's, Burma's treacherous jungles. Nice. In the Lion City. Oh, uh, let's keep spending people because we might need that political power, so. Uh, that's fine for now. We don't need to increase that one up. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. It is 1975, everyone. This is this is the longest campaign I've ever done, so. Hope you're enjoying it, because I am, too. In the Lion City. Once a British stronghold of Singapore, Sionan is perhaps Japan's most valuable city outside of their heartlands. Sitting at a key strategical junction, Sionan is the premier naval base for the IJN in Southeast Asia. Securing the loyalty of the local native authorities could be a massive boon for our invasion. A bottleneck in Sionan could delay Japanese reinforcements to the front lines by weeks. Depriving the empire of this vital region could be decisive in the coming war. Divide and rule. Our current effort has managed to get a degree of influence in the Burmese government. However, a better option for interest in this area might have presented itself. The state is full of rebels and separatist movements. The choice is obvious. Support the rebels and give up the central government, or stay on course. The choice is going to make. We will splinter Burma into a thousand pieces. One plan to work with us? We must preserve our influence in the central government. Eh. If they're more willing to work with us, we'll go with that. Um, against all masters. <laughs> the outbear has been working around the clock these last few weeks. It's taken some on... Taken on some of the... Taking some on the training ground, but our agents have quickly become adept at infiltrating the spheres of various puppets and member states. Working around the Kenpai Tai can be a lethal work, but our agents on the field have adapted quickly. By establishing intelligence networks all throughout Asia and identifying resistance groups that would welcome our help, our agents have become much more effective at winning over rebellious nations in the sphere. Their experience will also serve us as we continue to win over more nations for a cause against Japan. Tensions in Sionam? Ethnic tensions between Malays and Chinese minorities have been a thing for centuries in the area now ruled by Sionam. While we are still trying to get the entire state into the pact, this is by no means a guarantee. Hence, we can instead use the influence and networks built up by the Rock's agents in a different way. Insert agents provocateurs and rile up racial tensions to a boiling point. That should prove a useful distraction, and if Sionan refuses to join us, it should prove a crippling tool against them. Use our influence to light the fuse. No, still march, might still march alongside us. Well, I don't know about that. Um, um... We're doing that one, just because we already chose the different rebel groups there. China will grow larger. So attempt to support Chinese attempts to annex Tibet during the, after the war with Japan. Freedom for all the peoples of East Asia. Tibet will be offered an invitation to the pact, despite the protests from the Chinese government. Um, I don't want to increase tensions with us in Japan, so... As much as I do that one, please go read about that. We'll give them to grow ch larger. Our newfound friend in China are an ambitious lot. Even now, they're plotting into the near future, a future out from under the Japanese boot. Normally, we wouldn't care what their plans are after our great war, but the Chinese have come to us with one condition. If we wish to continue our uh, amicable relationships, or relationship, after our war with Japan, we would have to guarantee that the Chinese government would have a free hand in Tibet. This will, however, make it all but certain that the Tibetans will be our foe in the coming war, which is fine with us. I mean, if, if we have choppers, we should be okay. No guarantees, of course, but we should be okay. Keep building up some more... Ooh. Yes, that's very nice. Ah, good, 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 good. We're almost done with that stuff, which is awesome. Max out that cast, too. Ah, I'm the mince, yes. I'm not sure this is going to help our shift at all, but... It, it doesn't hurt to try, right? 
upgraded the subversion. The continu continuous efforts of the Reich's security organizations against a despicable cost prosperity sphere have gone for quite some time. By now, they've accumulated a considerable body of experience. Hence, we can now improve our means to gain influence even further. We can either become more brutal, underhanded, and reckless, or gain inf gaining influence quickly by destabilizing our targets in the process. Or we can increase our influence gain by taking more long-term measures, we would, which would, of course, take longer to implement. Finally, we could also focus on the true issue at hand, fighting allies against Japan and supporting them into capable fighters that will draw the fire of against Tokyo. Who cares about stability? We need to be effective. Long-term view? Our focus was in Japan. Let's take a long-term view for now. And then from within. Um, every nation which joins the Unity Pact will receive the national following national spirit. It's not bad. Increase. Let's wait to that. Into the mountains. Um, they join us. Or just go to war with them. Um, I want to go to war with them. I, I literally just want to go straight to war with them. I'd rather have them under us for now. <clears throat> That'll be fine with us. And of the All Russian Military League, we must be very careful when dealing with these Russians. They may prove difficult to control at all. A Moor joins us. Interesting. Blank focus tree, huh? Russia Heimat. Or Partisan Suppression. I prefer Partisan Suppression. So you're worried about this because you're ahead. Um, autonomy for service as well. So, and there's no description there. That's fine, whatever. Um, reclaim your birthright. Well, we can do that one. Partisan suppression. For uh, many a partisan, the war in the East has never truly ended. Hundreds of these scum hide in the vast countryside while insurgent cells multiply in various towns and cities scattered across the plains. We cannot afford resistance in our own lands when we're at war. This rot needs to be burnt out and, once, and at once. We need to intensify efforts to hunt down any Russian who would dare resist the will of the Reich. So after that, we should be good. If you want to read about uh, Into the Mountains, please go right ahead. So, uh, I mean, there's a 33% chance that we don't get no tensions raised, but... Eh, I prefer going to war. Xinjiang's strategic values are too important to leave in the hands of a bunch of rogue desert and mountain men. We cannot simply leave them to their own devices either. If the Japanese are able to get their hands on the region, it could spell disaster for supply lines. Yet we cannot trust them either. Our only choice is to invade the region. The attack will be swift and brutal. Securing this region will give us more options for our eventual invasion of Japan, and we can hand off occupation responsibilities to the Reichskommissariat of Turkestan. And now, we are almost completely done with our air doctrine. <clears throat> also, like, our fuel is looking very good. We must have built up a lot of things here. So I want you guys to rebase yourself. Um, you guys are fine, fine, fine. Since that area is mostly done... What about Brittany? Uh, I think I'm just going to go manage have to go to war with other people here, so... Cool. And you guys, we're doing what? This area? It's fine. I want you guys over here, too. Uh, come to this base. And you guys are like cruisers, nice. There you go. If that's the case, I want to make sure that our naval bases are actually okay. So there you go. Boom. Um, boom, boom, boom. Let's make a lot of naval bases. Can we make any radar here? Uh, no, we can't. That sucks. Um, you might want some of that too, because the invasion is going to be pretty, pretty brutal, probably. I'll do that as well. Um, so this place actually have pretty good infrastructure already, which is kind of surprising. I'll be honest. So yeah, it's not. There's no point to do this one yet. That sucks. Completely loyal. I don't know about that, man. Partisan suppression and secure across the wastes. Organization will increase by 12%. Attrition will be decreased by 20%. Cool. And we'll do this stuff eventually, too. So. The greatest betrayal. <clears throat> Securing it, please. Thank you very much. And you guys should be able... How strong are they? Like, seriously, how strong are they? That's a lot of manpower. And two di okay, they got two divisions. No one cares them. Uh, restore Mongolian pride. For two decades, Mongolia has been one large battleground for fierce fighting. Russian communists and Japanese troops continuously skirmish with each other throughout the landscape, while Mongolians are caught in the crossfire. The one Mongolian revolt crushed by the fierce and decisive Japanese firepower. It's not to say Mongolia is pacified. Thousands of nationals hide underground, biding their time while they hoard any weapons they can find. If we were to send some of our own men to help train and arm these freedom fighters, they could prove to be a useful dec decoy while our armies crash upon the Japanese from Manchuria. And calling our allies. Thank you. Look at all those allies. I love allies, man. So nice to have allies. Secondary school is still getting worse. Probably still getting worse too, right? Yeah, it's looking really bad. Um, from within, we'll do eventually block off Mongolia. Our front with the Japanese and its fear is massive. We can change the fact uh, face of the map, however, with some careful planning and timing. The steps of Mongolia are of no interest to the Reich. However, the Japanese are proud to a fault, and any insurrection would attract the attention of the IJA. While the Japanese spread themselves with uh, thin trying to hold all of their positions, we can focus on our overrunning Manchuria, which will be a huge economic blow to Japan once it falls. While the Japanese worry about maintaining the status quo in Mongolia, we will already be halfway to Beijing. As Frederick the Great once said, he who defends everything defends nothing. 
Tibet joins us here. It looks like our recent actions have spooked the Tibetans a bit too much. Today, the Abbe and the Foreign Ministry go hold of a soon-to-be-made official text about Lhasa becoming a member of the Copra Spirit Sphere. It seems like the highest mountains in the world will become another front line in our plans against Jap Japan now. The Himalayas won't stop Jim and Steel. No, they won't. <clears throat> There's no way they'll be able to. Oh, look at that. Raksumasariat Tatari. Hey, Mumartello. So, let's go back over here, the old breed. Now we want to do this one. Block off Mongolia. Uh, I think we still want to go to Afghanistan, right? The, how strong is Afghanistan? <coughs> uh, they're not that strong. They've up to six divisions. That's not that's not bad. Across the wastes, we've got a nice. Ah, uh, sure. Our final preparations are underway. Men are mobilizing across the frontiers, ready for battles. Our jets are loaded with munitions for the inevitable battles to come. The mood across the Ermac is one of intense excitement. All of our work these last few months is finally going to bear fruit. Our backlands are firmly secure. Our supply routes are well established and ready, and our armies filled to capacity with eager men willing to give their lives for the glory of the Reich. We are on the eve of a great fight, yet, Commander, prepare yourself. See, Kyle. Yes, yes. And then. We're going to do the old breed. Locked in thousands of dark cells in Germany, idle some of the Reich's most efficient brutal killers after the Civil War. Thousands of SS men who did not fight to the death weren't shot on sight, or currently are a wasting way in these cells. Their lives forfeit, but the state is more or less forgotten these fanatics, content to let them rot away in prison. The coming war will require every man we can get a hold of. Though they have sullied their nation before, we could offer them a path to redemption. We could form penal battalions made up of these men up for the upcoming war with Japan. These hardened butchers could be the spearhead of our invasion, used for the most dangerous assaults, or let loose to pacify local populations. As is their speciality, it would be foolish to not let us to not use the tools left at our disposal. Three special infantry divisions will spawn in Rex Commissariat Fenos, composed of former SS soldiers. Very good. We're getting ready, boys and girls. We're getting ready. Fill the lines. Any Russian who is deemed not a threat to the state should be at the offer to join a cause against the samurai. The benefits are much better than working in some squalid factory, and the additional manpower could very well end up being the deciding factor in winning us the war. It is not an ideal situation, having a large amount of non-Germans fighting alongside our men, but a situation is one born out of necessity. We will need every man who we can get who can hold a rifle. <clears throat> Reclaim your birthright. My countrymen, my brothers, communists and other dissenters would have you believe that it is a German who is your enemy. They are wrong. They are cowards. They would have you turn your rifle on our liberators, our friends, those who cleanse the blight of box from these sacred lands. Those who have given us liberty in the East and have given us a new purpose. Fascism spreads across Europe like a blessed sunlight in the morning, but we cannot idle. No friends for us. The Russian people still have a part to play. To herself, the cities are the forefathers, our forefathers, set so occupied by the degenerate Asiatic scum, the Japanese blight leeches, the lifeblood of our people. Those who beg to be reunited with us rightful rulers of our people shot in the streets, tortured or enslaved, but the time is nigh. The time of reunion is fast approaching. We shall walk arm in arm with the faithful allies and return proper Russian rule to the wayward uh, brothers. To Vladivostok, see Heil. <clears throat> Venture in uh, de depots. Our logistic officers have identified several key junctions to set up supply depots at once, or, once our invasion is, is underway. The purpose is for our army to remain autonomous and on the move, even in the event of our lines be cut off. However, unlikely th that may be. Thousands upon thousands of tons of food, water, and ammo, fuel, anything and everything related to the upcoming campaign is being stockpiled for that purpose. The Fuhrer is adamant that we leave nothing to chance. Our men will fight with everything they could possibly need. We'll start setting up supply depots in Manchuria and Korea, which will supply our troops once we reach them to continue our advance. Well, we're not even in Korea, but we'll get there eventually. From within, we'll do that eventually. And then we'll do Operation Alexander. Sit down with the Saudis. Ooh. They'd be a favorite to be increased by 40%. That's not bad. Clamp down on Arabia. Yeah, we're going straight to war with them. Oh, so I'll look at all that. Attrition will increase by 20%. So if you want to read about this one, please go ahead. Sit down with the Saudis. We're definitely going to clamp down on Arabia. We have no time to waste. Saudi Arabia made its bed well before now. Once They once made their beds with Italians. How can we ever trust them after that? If we offer them a place in the pact as equals, they are apt to stab us in the back and inform the Japanese of our plans. This will not do. We have no choice but to invade the potential. The operation itself will be quick and decisive. The Arabs simply do not have the military might to stand against the vast might of the Reich. We will blitz across the peninsula and crush all who oppose us. Their oil wells will have, make a great addition to the Reich's conquest. As well as a gate to the subcontinent. And there you go. Secretly promising any lands to the Afghans will ensure they will quickly join the pact once we say the word. Once we launch Operation Alexander, we'll receive a decision to invite Afghanistan to the pact. Alright, everyone, so now we've just launched the invasion of Arabia. So hopefully we'll do okay here. And we'll do probably okay. Um, I'm probably going to have to use Cons Commands earlier or later just to get rid of the United Arab Republic. I might do that off screen before we go to actually go to war with them. But we're not going to do Flip the Switch because they actually won. You know, the Iran that we actually like actually won. So. 
and will be okay with Iranian military cooperation. Iran's strain is brutal. Mountain after mountain cross the war-torn country. And although we are confident in victory, there could be a second easier option available to us. Our administration still has friends in Iran, and we have cordial relations with the government. If we so choose, we can secretly begin talks with the Iranian government to negotiate their entry into the pact. The benefits hardly need to be discussed, not having to fight our way through Iran or being forced to supply. And man, an occupation army will allow us to use our resources and manpower where it really matters for the east. Followed up with, into the Indian Ocean. With Saudi Arabia now under German influence, we now have access to dockyard facilities with a direct access to the Indian Ocean. This is a huge strategic advantage for our forces. The Kriegsmarine has now forward operating bases to raid the Indian Ocean with impunity. These trade links are vital to both India and Japan. Being about to indirect enemy troops and their supply lines in these waters will make fighting our foes in the coming wars a much less grueling effort or affair. An ambitious commander could also stage ambitious landings, amphibious landings from here, if the situation allows for it. And we're doing relatively okay. Uh, they still with the enemy. No one cares. Okay, we really don't, no one cares about that. Cool. Just keep going in, guys. You're doing a great job. I mean, honestly, like, I sent the helicopter from Afghanistan over here, so we'll see what happens. Actually, which one is? No, these guys are dope, and that's really nice. So uh, I think off screen, I'm just gonna just start going to war with a lot of people like in Europe, like Brittany, or anyone that's basically left, um, that's not with their faction or part of any faction. So I will have to use Collins commands, but it's fine. Whatever. It is what it is. And people like you guys said, like, just take out everybody. Just kill them all off. Spare nobody. Ah, Mecca. Mecca is rifle German clay, as we all know. Cool. Followed up with, separate the chain of command. Operation Alexander cannot be bogged down with an ineffective chain of command. Our general staff is full of ambitious and skilled men. This leads to disagreements, to put it mildly. Our best men all have different skill sets and approaches to combat. At this time, we cannot allow any bickering within the upper echelons of, to impede our upcoming invasion. Therefore, we're going to split the chain of command so our top generals have total local autonomy from each other. While some may see us as potentially cat catastrophic, swift victory is key to our success. The hail will not be able to afford any lost time once the invasion starts, if anything. This will spark competitiveness between our staff, which will drive them even harder to on our journey east. Giving our generals free reign will allow them to act to their fullest potential, which should see our blitz east or proceed with minimal hiccups. Very good. More army speed, soft attack, armor speed, supply consumption goes down by 25%, which is insane. That's really nice. And of course, we will separate the chain of command, which is good. And look at this. Rex Commissariat Arabin. Von Schwellen. Cool. Let's go on in, my boys. And we won. Ah, beautiful. And we still own Abu Dhabi, basically. But that's alright with us, so we will come back to war these guys maybe a little bit later on. Um, yeah, I might just do this off screen just because it's, it's not gonna be that difficult, right? Right? Yeah, that seems kind of cool though. It looks really cool. No manpower. 13. Yeah, that's not bad. American volunteers too. They got some black shirts there too. All right, well whatever. Let's get the heck out of here because supply is probably really bad. We'll see what happens and do that. Thank you. Ooh, what else do we have here? Oh, set of the oh supply depots. Oh, so the Japanese Empire is preparing for conflict. Okay. Um, when removed, we remove we remove ourselves. Let's. Yeah, we must have set up some supply depots. Rush supply depots. Every supply depot currently built, being built will immediately be finished, but every supply depot will have a reduced effort, even though it's already finished. No. Yeah, just set up all this stuff. Oh. Oh, we can invade Afghanistan. Oh, that'd be kind of nice. Invade Pakistan. We can, we're, we can invite Afghanistan, though. Um. I mean, you guys did say don't invade everybody. And we didn't already have Iran here, just kind of hanging out. And let's see what happens. Can we invite them? We're going to invade India now. Influence Sphere Nation. Effectiveness upgrade. Effectiveness upgrade. We could try it. We could try to invade them as well. Um, hmm. Let's look up here. For, like, a nation such as what? Yeah, I'll just do Sianan. Anything happen there? No? Okay. Uh, separate the chain of command, of course. We'll see what happens. The greatest betrayal. We'll open up communication with the government Azad Hind so that once we launch Operation Alexander, we'll be able to pull them into the pact fully in exchange for granting them in India. The invasion of India will likely be a titanic effort. The country is home to millions upon millions, and the subcontinent itself is vast. The conquest of India is an undertaking that we that we be the subject of a legend. And rightfully so. Still, so, even still, occupying the subcontinent will be a huge undertaking, even if the initial war so e is easily won. Luckily for us, there's another player who may just be interested in what we have to offer them. The Azad Hind, for several decades, has sat in Bengal, considering themselves the true heirs and liberators of India. The two's mutual hate is no secret to anyone. If we were able to convince the Azad Hind to join the pact and assist us with the conquest of India, we could wash our hands of having to garrison the subcontinent, leaving them to deal with the occupying the country, which would save us another headache. The Azad Hind are unlikely to decline. They're desperate to act, just not able to do so. They would take help from anyone who offered it, and we're offering a deal they can't refuse. We'll open up communications with the government of Azad Hind, so that once we launch Operation Alexander, we'll be able to pull them into the pact fully in exchange for granting them India. 
Not bad. So are you guys with us? Yes, they are. I wish there were Rex to survive, but that's okay. That's fine. They're still doing the oil crests. Look at that. Western resignation? Cool. And I guess Pakistan's next. Back up, back up, Pakistan. Looks very sad. It's alright, though. It's alright. Give us a few days and we'll be over there. Cool, cool, cool. Too bad. Oh, I should, maybe we should, I should invade them. Because we can just build in the territory if we just invade them. Yeah, don't worry about the debt. Debt is but a number. Just like age. But I said that before, but whatever. Oh, okay. Call all of our allies in. Thank you. Takes a little bit of time, but that's okay with us. Alrighty, righty, tighty. Wow, look at all those allies. Ah, oh, so nice. Upgrade influence. Try that one, I guess. Philippines might be good as well. Alright. Are you guys going in? Yes, you are. How strong are they? Not that strong. And they're basically dead already. 50,000 have died, basically. We lost nobody yet. 60,000 versus nobody? Not bad. Well, if I've... Oh, look at that. Okay, they've completely flipped. We can basically coup them. Afghanistan's gone. Now we have Oryx come start Bactrian. Nice. <clears throat> Invade India. Now, India is probably going to be very strong to take out. Two million manpower. Up to quite a few divisions. Um, could you still beat them all up? You still might be able to. I mean, these guys are 40 count. Let's get ready to invade. Because I don't know how long we have for this before the uh, infrastructure really hurts us. Destroy Burma. Invite the Hazad Hind. The Greatest Betrayal. Let's we'll see what happens. A three, two, one. Oh, we completed it now. Nice. And a little bit more lag. The IFVs might give us a little bit of trouble, but with 40 combo with attack helicopter support companies, we should do okay, right? Right? <clears throat> oh, we can't do any of this stuff. Oh, we can't. Oh, well, we literally can't do any of this stuff. So if you want about this, please go to head. Emergency repairs, or yeah, reparations, and over the mountains. Cool. So, yeah. Okay, so that's good. That's good. That's all good. That's good. And from within, um, all of our hard work. These last few months has led us to here. For months, we have infiltrated the nations that Japan has abused, sucked dry or ignored. For months, our men have trained, supplies have been stocked by an intricate webs of espionage weaved. The battle plans have been drawn, alliances have been negotiated, and now it is time. It's time for the rising sun to set. It's time for the Reich to achieve its destiny, and once and for all, like an unstoppable wave, we should crush, crash upon the entirety of the Japan's co so called co prosperity sphere, and they shall soon learn their fate to mistake, underestimating us. God Mittuns, Sieg Heil, Sieg Heil. Let's see what we can do with these guys. Um, so here is the entire group. Um, worse than academic base? Oh, if you're about this, please go right ahead. When literacy dies, society goes with it. That sucks. But whatever, it's not that big of a uh, you know, hurt. What about my clique? Honestly, I think I'm probably just going to go to war with them as well. Like, I'll go to war with these guys. I'll go to war with these guys. I'll go to war with these guys off screen. Um, Africa, I'll just go take them out as well. I don't think there's any point to wait for taking these guys out. So anyone we see here will get taken out off screen. Maybe except for Vietnam in the end. So, Indone Oh, Indonesia is separate. Look at that. I didn't realize that. It's cool. So yeah, we'll probably just do that off screen just because we can. Um, it is what it is. Uh, from within, might as well. Every nation which joins the Unity Pact will receive the following national spirit, which would be good. We'll see what happens with them, though. Are you guys doing well here? 3,000 have died. 4,000. Um, hopefully you're doing okay up through here. Are you not moving, guys? Do we not? Yeah, okay. There we go. That's better. Now we're going to be moving much more quickly. We'll probably lose a few guys here and there, but... That's a lot of dead already. Ah, military construction is very nice. Very, 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 very nice. And I hope you enjoy the thumbnail from this for this video, so... Specifically made it just because of Burgundy. 72,000 died. They have up to 12 divisions max. Um, Yeah, 100,000 have died. Looking pretty good so far. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> really good. How dare bad? Please, please, please. I mean, this is one of the best casualty ratios I've ever had, ever. 140,000 died versus zero. Oh, we actually split them in two. Look at that. Rex Commissariat, Zentra Indin Mountain, and Rex Commissariat, Sud Indin. 
Pretty nice, pretty nice. And we can invade Nepal. They're preparing for conflict, which... Oh, and we also this one, too. Um, Hindustan. Ah, ah, nephew. Ah, very good, very good. And this one might give us a little bit of trouble. I'm sure this one's going to give us a little bit of trouble here. I'm sure it will. Oh, yeah, get some more supplies over here. We definitely need them. Um, oh, we don't have enough for that. That sucks. Just in case, you never know. Go, let's go, let's go. Um, we'll invade from within. Okay, so with from within, does anyone else join us yet? No. That sucks. So we invaded those guys down there. <clears throat> Eclipse the Rising Sun. Oh, look at this. Okay, so... Huh. So Guangxi leaves the pact and joins Einheit's pact. The Republic of China leaves that group. They leave. All the Chinese leave. Sichuan leaves. Mengjiang leaves. And joins us. That's really cool. The time for waiting is over. Now is the time for fighting men, for warriors. The world will watch us closely for the balance of power is about to drastically shift permanently. The sun is about to set on the Empire of the Rising Sun, and in its place will rise the Iron Eagle of the Reich. Our panzers are itching to blaze or blitz across the Manchurian plains, and who are we to stop them? It is well time the Reich puts the Japanese in their place once and for all. Your two are German commanders, Sieg Heil. You fought for your homes, your family, and your Reich. Your people demand nothing short of Ensieg. Which, as a mod, I've never played but hard to find for. So, that being said, I'd like to do this one, but I'm going to wait a little bit. Because I'm going to need a little bit of time off screen to make sure everything's done and ready to go. But how about this one? The America Bomber. Before the end of the last world war, the Luftwaffe under now Fuhrer Hermann Göring sought to develop strategic bombers capable of striking the American homeland from the German air bases. The project has made several strides, but was eventually terminated after it proved unnecessary to win the war. Now the specter of war with the U.S. looms large again, and given that the American mainland is now the primary target, Fuhrer Göring was eager to restart the long dormant project, collecting data from the past 20 years of aviation developments and combat data. It should now be relatively simple to design a plan that can launch from an airport outside of Brandenburg, deploy a payload up to, including nuclear bombs and return home safely. Proposed stealth bombers such as the proposed Holton H, uh, uh, 8th, or 18th, I guess, are also being looked at for actual development under the project's mandate. <clears throat> Storm their beaches. The upcoming American invasion will likely prove to be the largest amphibious assault in history as we deploy every frontline division we have at our disposal against our enemy. We will overwhelm their defenses by striking the coats at multiple points and driving in them from there. This will be, for all intents and purposes, an amphibious Operation Barbarossa. Just like Barbarossa, the campaign will end with total victory for the Reich thanks to the weakness of our foe and our own immense strength and resolve. The Americans believe that their size can save them. Ha! They shall realize just how well that worked for the Slavs. Yes. Actually, what's going to happen to the treaty ports then? Like Francis, Francis is going on um, LA? Like, how's that going to work? Oopsie, I clicked on another one, too. Um, do we actually get those ports to operate out of? That'd be actually really cool if we did. That'd actually be really cool. So we get all of China with us, which is going to be very cool. Except for Tibet, which is fine. We'll blitz through here as best we can. I'm going to go ahead and shift our ships out of here. So we'll see. Ooh. Republic of Ceylon. I will take them out. As Actually, you know what? We'll take them out off screen as probably as well. There you go. Um, we'll have the Navy Bay, which is fine. Cool. Any other divisions? Nice, nice, nice. We're not 100% there yet, but that's okay. Uh, just in case. I want you guys to stretch from here. Uh, not you. Something like that. Just so you're ready to go. Cool. Are we good to go? Good to go? Good to go? Oh, you're moving in already. That's nice. How many divisions? They have no divisions. Okay. <clears throat> ah, very nice. Hindustan. Very good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I could not ask for a better army. So, we're going to do those. Storm the beaches. Review American geography, of course. Well, let's storm the beaches. And... Oh, it's only a 7-day focus. And the conquistador's footsteps. Cool. And let's go with a review of American geography. Unlike with Europe, the Reich has never deployed ground forces in the U.S.'s territory, and thus our generals are woefully lacking in the minute details of its geography. To make sure our forces are properly deployed once a direct invasion begins, we have instituted a crash course of the American terrain to make sure each officer of sufficient rank is familiarized with the lay of the land. In a fight against another nuclear power, speed is crucial, and the faster our forces are able to take out key targets, the higher the chance of victory will be declared before nukes begin flying. Well, we'll see what happens. And let's grab some of that. Yes. Remember this. You know, grab some more gun stuff. I've neglected gun stuff for a while now, which is really bad of me. But let's read a few more focuses here and swarm the skies. This will be the crowning glory for the Luftwaffe's history, or it will be if the Fuhrer has any say in the matter. Helicopters, bombers, and both tactical and strategic fighters and interceptors will all be sent speeding over the American skies in an effort that will make the Blitz of England look like child's play. Whenever they look up, they shall see only the shadows of our planes and the scream of our engines. We even devised speakers to play the infamous Stuka scream from our helicopters to put fear into their hearts. The, US Knights, the United States Air Force will have no chance to even put up a fight between, before we smash their planes on the runways. 
fleets. Our air fleets shall blot out the sun itself until our battle's been won. Um, yeah, contact the America, America Deutsche Bund. In the mind of the American public, the image of the Reich is supposed to be one that is detested and feared. This is no doubt an unfortunate consequence of their bitterness and defeat, but there are some enough, uh, brave enough to fight back against the lies and propaganda. The Amerikaner Deutsche Bund as a group of sympathizers within the U.S. They are small and lack any kind of mitigating support for the most part. However, it is always a good idea to establish connections with possible allies before uh, rather than after the victory to ensure smooth relations and clear understanding of who stands where. That is why, despite his general lack of faith and the ability to be much help, the Führer has agreed to see several representatives of the group in Berlin. Perhaps they end up surprising him, but I've got to end the episode here, my friends, because tomorrow we will begin with the invasion of Japan, which will be a lot of fun and probably a little bit difficult. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if, if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Here is all the factions and all these small little states, which is why I read the focuses so we can invade these guys off screen and prepare to take out the Japanese in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.